Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla. Let's go over the market. Let's go over what's happening. And yeah, Tesla's once again doing Tesla things. It ended up making me break some of my own rules, which I will uh, quickly talk about as well. But all that being said and done, moving right into it, the market closing in just about three minutes. Tesla looking like we'll be closing up about 1% on the day. Compared to the market, uh, you know, an okay outperformance. I wouldn't say it's anything phenomenal, but definitely a little bit of an outperformance, a little bit of, you know, nice pressure or buying pressure there. But let's talk about what this all means moving forward, because this is where things really start getting interesting, to say the least. So definitely some pretty low volume today overall. I mean, obviously higher than these two days, but uh, these uh, I think this was the Friday. I believe yeah, this was the Friday. Monday obviously was a very high volume day, even though the bar is low because it was only like about like about 60 percent of the day or something like that, maybe half the day. Um, but for that amount of time, you know, the volume was obviously quite high. Um, so today, you know, the volume is definitely a little bit on the lower side with some buying pressure, which, you know, is a little bit of a red flag for me, but we'll discuss everything and we'll talk about what we can expect moving forward. So first and foremost, let's start off actually on the daily. So there is a new thing that I am, well, kind of a new thing, I guess I am watching, which is going to be, as of, I'm sure you can tell, these green lines right here. Essentially, what this tells me is that the fact that we are in this massive channel, right? Ever since the lows all the way back down around the 100 level, uh, you know, we came up, we came back down, came up, right? and then you can see we're kind of zigzagging upwards in this kind of upward channel. And once again, you know, we, I mean, we, we came up to this, uh, to the channel, the top of the channel right here, obviously got a pretty decent rejection. And we're back at the top of the channel once again. So this is where things start getting a little bit interesting. You know, like, what does this mean, right? Is this maybe the time for us to, re you know, finally push through the channel, start, you know, going above it? Or is this time to finally reject once again, similar to how we did here, similar to how we did here, and go lower before we ultimately, obviously, going higher? What's the deal here? What's going to play out, right? Obviously, no one knows for sure. I'm not going to tell you, you know, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen, and this is it, right? No one knows for sure, but of course, we're going to make an educated guess. So... The fact that we're at the top of this channel at the moment, at the moment, of course, as of literally right this very moment, technically to me is bearish. And the reason I say it's bearish is because, well, I mean, based on, you know, his, I mean, history really in terms of, you know, touching this channel every single time, obviously so far we've projected. So, and the fact that we're literally at the channel right now is a little bit bearish because we can easily just reject and easily fall back down somewhere to the, you know, maybe even mid 200s, if not lower, right? But on the flip side, if you do break out of this channel to the upside, then you, in my opinion, of course, not financial advice, make your own decisions. Again, this is just obviously all for fun. But then you can technically buy that, uh, the breakout, right? You buy the breakout and then you rally or you run with it to the upside, right? But at the moment, it's obviously not a confirmed breakout, as I'm sure you can see on the daily. We are pretty much getting rejected right at it once again. A little bit something to consider. And of course, as if that was enough, we still have the overall trend to break above, which of course is going to be this massive final boss of a red line, right? That's the overall trend that Tesla really wants to break. And unfortunately, they intersect pretty much right at this rough level that we're at right now, right? They're essentially more or less intersecting here. So a lot of resistance up there to break through this, right? Will we break through it? I think it'll take at least earnings to have a chance to break through this, if obviously assuming earnings is good and not bad, right? So, you know, it's, I, I wouldn't really count on breaking through this anytime soon i think that the i think the best case scenario is we just go sideways up here and obviously the quote-unquote worst case scenario is we do actually finally get the dip now with that being said you can see an exceptionally obvious bearish divergence on tesla sitting all the way down here on the rsi which is of course something to absolutely pay attention to right that's not something you want to completely ignore because again as we're making higher highs we're making exceptionally obvious lower highs over here on the rsi that is literally textbook bearish divergences which i I personally value quite a bit right obviously they don't always play out nothing is guaranteed in the market but it is one of the many tactics or strategies or uh, indicators i guess is a better term here that i personally do look at and i consider pretty you know pretty decently right so just keep that in mind that is something to consider right guys you know it's you know it's just keep that in mind this usually doesn't usually not always but usually doesn't end very very well now with that being said also taking a quick look at the 30 minute let's say this is what the intraday movement was like today and uh the day before well, not the day before the day before that because yesterday was closed but we were essentially zigzagging in this little area and you can see we did break out right and i posted that about that in my membership section down below um so if you're interested by the way the link is down below two dollars 99 cents and i this is where i talked about how i did break my rules because i ended up buying shares up here which i you know, again, that breaks all my rules because, again, I think up here is exceptionally risky. I think it's an exceptionally high 
risk reward versus reward situation. You're buying at extremely elevated prices after a massive, massive run up without really much of a cool off. And again, to me, that's personally breaking my rules, which, you know, thankfully it worked out in this case. I am still holding it. You know, it's one of those things where I'm almost like taking those shares I bought as a martyr, if that makes sense. But nonetheless, I did break this breakout, buy this breakout. And of course, we did get a beautiful run up all the way back up to 283. Unfortunately, we did close below this 282 level. So we're still closing candles. Oh, we're still getting rejected at this overall level above 282 to 285. Right? This to me right now is the major resistance area, 282 to 285. Right, which also, of course, 285 is pretty much roughly where the top of the channel is. And you can see we get a beautiful run up, and then we actually got a pretty massive sell off, it looks like, towards the end of the day, right? So keep that in mind as well. Some maybe some extra liquidity, who knows what that exactly was, right? But it ended up being a massive rally into a massive sell off right towards the end of the day. So who knows what that actually meant? But the point is the fact that we're still having issues closing above this overall resistance of around 282 and a half ish, give or take, which isn't a good sign so far. But the fact that it did break out to the north side of this is, I guess, a good sign for the bulls, which really what you know gave this little bit of a run up up here. So, you know, again, this is a very, very tricky situation, a very like high risk situation and you know, place to be in with uh, Tesla stock right now with the price, right? It's again, in my opinion, quite elevated up here. And, you know, technically, again, like I said, it can run further, which is why I do have those shares. But the risk versus reward, in my opinion, is extremely low. So, you know, it's, it's a very high risk and you really know, need to know what you're doing here, in my opinion. But that's kind of the main thing I'm looking at right now. We saw the 21 email, which is well below us. Wouldn't be surprised if we retest that at the very least, maybe gap fill. And okay, and actually speaking of which, let's talk about what do the bulls and the bears want to see in order for Tesla to uh, you know, either rally further or finally start another cool off similar to what we had here ish, let's just say, or maybe even lower, right? What does Tesla need to do for both scenarios? Let's talk about the bulls first. The bulls obviously need, I mean, it's pretty simple. You really at the very least want to be breaking above this kind of 284 to 285 ish level. Exceptionally important that the bulls not only break above that, but more importantly, even hold above that level, right? So far, they're not able to do that. And the bears are essentially, and the sellers are really stepping in right at that level, right? Very, very difficult. And of course, top of that is if that wasn't enough, we have the major resistances right above us being this green channel that we are at the very top of right now. And of course, the overall red channel as well that, or, or trend line that we are, of course, very, very close to as well. That is going to be a, essentially, like I said, a major final boss rejection level. So keep that in mind as well, right? So the bulls essentially at the very least want to see a break above 284 285 at the very least to test maybe the 290s and then from there we'll see what happens right but the bears what they want to see is of course going to be a breakdown below somewhere around pretty much 275 roughly give or take right and pretty much lower than these levels right here, which is just on the lower end of the 275 range. And if that happens, then I think that's when we come down and probably more or less a gap fill somewhere close to 265, potentially all the way down to that 262 gap fill. And then I think we might get a little bit of a bounce and some support there. But ultimately, that's kind of what I am seeing, because you can also make an argument, the fact that we are kind of in this little bit of a channel up here, you know, so I mean, that's a possibility as well. So there's a lot of weird situations happening here with Tesla that I'd be very careful with. But ultimately, that's the main thing I'll be looking at, right? 284 for the bulls and then about 270, uh, four ish for the bears uh, to break and to continue moving to that, you know, respective uh, uh, side or direction rather. So that's all more or less what I am considering right now. And I am thinking, right. Other than that, we have a bullion under band, which we're still hugging the green line, of course, right. Nothing too crazy over there. Right. So, you know, it's again, usually when you hug the green line, it's very common or, or the red line, it's common to at some point come over to the white line as the median and to at least dance around the four bit. So much what we did over here, like I said, we, we hu hugged the green line for a while and ultimately we came back pretty much right exactly to the white line more or less. Right. So and pretty much bounce right off of it. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Very common to retrace back to that at some points, more like most likely sooner than later. But that's kind of what I am seeing right now, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, it's, it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a very peculiar situation, I guess, to say the least, right? So just, again, this is definitely an area I would be very cautious of. Again, I still think Tesla can rally up and go a little bit higher. I wouldn't be surprised if you maybe even potentially go up to 284 tomorrow. But like the risk versus reward in my eyes here is atrocious, which again, I broke my rules even buying in this level, but so far it's been working out. But again, what I'm personally doing is because I am still mostly cash, I am looking at using these shares as a martyr, right? Because if Tesla just rallies from here, fantastic, I'll make money on it. If Tesla, however, plummets and it breaks these levels and starts, you know, correcting, I will take the loss. But what that means is it's finally coming down to the levels I want to actually really start buying more shares. So it's an ultimate W for me, the way I look at it, right? Might be a quick, short-term, small loss, but that's like a little bit of a loss I'm willing to take in order to kind of give me that opportunity to really start buying more shares. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. That's just the way I think about it, right? Um, but yeah, anyways, that's kind of what I am seeing. So let me know what you think down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.